That's too long. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, welcome back to the channel. Now, in this video, I was actually trying to build a boost converter when I stumbled across a problem. At the start of the boost converter is an inductor, okay? And in order to build or engineer a successful boost controller, you need to know the inductance, which is a problem because I don't have a way to measure inductance. Now, if you have a look online, for LCR meter, you'll see like some expensive ones in the range of 400 and I saw one for $900, right? I'm not gonna buy that. Now there's the cheap ones where like they're component testers, but they can be inaccurate. I think you can pick them up for like $50 here in Australia. And so I could have bought that, but I thought it'd be really cool to actually build a resonance circuit. When you pulse a voltage into it and charge the capacitor, uh, the capacitor actually sends the, the voltage back to the inductor and it oscillates back and forth creating a beautiful resonant frequency and you can actually capture this on the oscilloscope and accurately measure the inductance from that resonant frequency. The formulas and everything will go through and you'll see uh, how we can actually accurately measure the inductance of not only this one but to prove the reliability I actually have one which actually has a value to it it's uh, 47 micro -Henrys. so if we can get 47 micro -Henrys on this well then we can get an accurate reading for this one that I made it's not hard to make it you just get any core any ferrite core you can even do an air core like this one here this one's just an air core I just wrap this around a pen and just slid it off a little bit less inductance, but that's all right. You can even do one around a bolt. They're all the same, right? Electromagnet, inductor, same thing. Okay, so here's the general gist, right? We have our five volt source. We have our capacitor, inductor, and ground. So the size I have settled on is um, 100 nanofarad. And this inductor is unknown. You want to go with a value that's not too big and not too small. If you go with a value too big, your resonant frequency, which is going to start off like this, is going to be dampened really, really hard and it's going to look like it's loaded down. If you go too small, the frequency will be really too high and it'll just die out really, really fast. Okay, so now with that said, let's show you what it looks like on the breadboard. Okay, so we have our power with the white that we're going to pulse to this. Right, we have our capacitor and our inductor connected in parallel with each other. And then it goes to ground. And we have our probe. Right, where's our probe? Our probe is the red um red wire ground and then we're going to see the waveform on our oscilloscope now i did have a flyback diode but i disconnected it because i don't think i don't think it's really going to be i don't know we'll see if something goes wrong uh, it's because i didn't have that flyback diode there but i don't think so okay so we're all ready to go uh, we have the power supply at 5 volt, we have the oscilloscope ready to go. Uh, we're just going to probe the circuit just to get a, uh, just to charge it up, let it go, and then let it oscillate. And we'll see it ringing on the oscilloscope. But let me run you through the oscilloscope settings really fast. Okay. So, in order to see this, we have to have it on trigger mode. And that's going to be on normal. Um, don't have it on auto and don't have it on single. Uh, and the trigger is going to be right above that baseline. If this works, I'm going to be so happy. All right, so let's, so I don't know if you can see this. Uh, we're going to take our white wire very, very fast. Oh, that was too long. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. We've got to celebrate the small wins sometimes. And that was great. That was a great small win. 
What this tells us now is that we can accurately measure our inductance, right? And we're actually going to get something. That looked so smooth, so nice, not jittery at all. First time. Not first time, actually. So now we had our little celebration. It's time to uh, measure our frequency. So we can scale, I'm hoping we can scale in on this. Uh, can we? Yes, we can. All right. Let's go to the first peak down here. That's right smack bang in the middle. Right to the other point, right there. And it looks like we have, on our oscilloscope, we have 69.93 kilohertz. Okay, so as we're measuring trough to trough. Now, let's go into, let's go back to the drawing board and let's go over the formulas and calculate the uh, inductance. All right, so we have our uh, fundamental frequency right here and we know it. So it's 69.93. Get that smaller, Jesus. Okay, but we don't know our inductance, so we solve for our inductance and we plug in what we know. So one over two pi uh, times 69.93 times 10 to the negative three, oh, to positive three, sorry. That's kilohertz. Square that times our capacitance, which is 100 times 10 to the negative nine because it's nanofarads. 51.7 micro. Okay, so we're here at the data, okay. all right? And this isn't exactly the number that we were hoping for. Uh, we've got it in the calculator right there. And so this is what I like to call, not manipulating data, but, I mean, if you're not entirely accurate, maybe you measured a little bit inaccurate. So we go back to the cursors and Think, all right, maybe we measured wrong. So let's bring this a bit closer. Maybe, you know, right there for channel A, maybe it's there. And let's go to B and measure this a bit closer. Maybe we'll write, you know, there. There, right? So now we have 72.46 kilohertz. So that changes the game a lot. So we come back here. And you think, all right, let's change this to 72, 72.46. Let's change it in our calculator as well, 72. And we are very on the money. I mean, 48.2, um, you know, the thing was measured at 47 micro Henry. For us to measure it with an oscilloscope at 47 is, at 48.2 is very, very good accuracy for an experiment. So. I wouldn't recommend going out and buying an LCR if you have an oscilloscope. And an oscilloscope is such an essential tool to have in your toolbox uh, compared to an LCR. You can just do so much more with an oscilloscope. It will really take you from, you know, down here all the way to up here. Actually seeing the voltage is unbeatable. I got mine for like, uh, I think it was like $350. So yeah, if you don't have any money, just save up whatever you have, you know, uh, and, and buy one because it will seriously take you to the next level. Um, now that we've measured the inductance, I'll see you in the next video where we build a boost converter and we see how much we can actually boost the voltage. Hopefully it can be quite a lot. See you in the next video.